one theme H. Um, this is an interesting theme, I think, because it's fairly basic, and yet I got a lot of good large-scale spelling knowledge from it. Um, so, the first thing is, the big idea is about this theme, the usual structure of English words is to have one base element with or without prefixes or suffixes. And throughout the theme, the word element is used, and to me, I'm just thinking that as the parts and the pieces in this. Compound words are those which have two base elements with or without prefixes or suffixes. The big idea here that I'm taking away is normally, normal words are one base element, but we do have these things called compounds. Grammarians recognize two categories of compound nouns, and I didn't know this, but there are single words built from two words, which themselves can be freestanding. So like anybody, which is any and buddy put together, and they are together as a compound. There's also a fixed expression, is what he calls it, where the words are written separately, but we say them, you, ne you say them together all the time that they could practically be considered a compound. But it's more like a phrase or an expression. Car park. We call it that all the time, but those words are separated. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that this theme is concerned with the compounds that are hooked together. Okay? Okay. So there are some spelling conventions that we're going to learn here about compound words, some ways to help us recognize and realize when they are a compound word versus two separate words. And the meaning of compound words is related to the meaning of its components. And this is the biggest, the biggest idea, I think. It comes back to meaning. Um, let me stand here. So preparing for this theme, first of all, getting our kids back to identifying the base. And there's some, this can be some good um, initial work that you do with your kids by giving some words and then having them break off the suffixes and prefixes, if there are any, and locating the base. Because compounds, first and foremost, are made of base words or base elements that are put together, and then we can always add suffixes and prefixes. But making sure that kids can identify bases before you, you start might be a good way to, to go. Um, Melvin also provides a... Uh, sort of thinking sheet that you can use with some words and his um, recommendation is once kids identify the base to underline it which also makes it apparent so it's kind of like backdoor practice of suffixes and prefixes as well because you can pull those off okay so just some quick warm-ups oh, oh this might be funny <laughs> main theme, um, Melvin introduces it by saying that basically we already know how, how words are built and we have had practice in deciding what a base word is, which you did before. Um, now we need to look at how two base elements can be combined to make something called a compound word. And kids in the upper grades may be very like, of course, I know that, but what we're going to show them about compounds um, may challenge their understanding. And for little kids, this may be the first time they think about this idea of two words put together. So, um, one way to start is to pose the question with a word, give them a little bit of an investigation, and ask what is the base of the word something. And what they'll determine is there are two bases. And this is a new kind of word which has two bases put together that we call a compound word. And then I started thinking another place to go is what does compound mean? Um, other examples that you could start out with are haircut, roadside, or weekend as well. Um, then we get into compound word structure, the idea that each compound word is built from two base words. And I need to say that throughout the theme, Melvin uses base word and base element and base kind of all interchangeably. But I know the idea that we want to, and it probably works for compound words, but bases can sometimes not be words. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, they are. So I think that's why the use of base word. Compound word elements are spelled as, as they were as single words, they don't, you don't make any changes to their spelling. So I think just this base idea for kids is really interesting. When I go to put two bases together into a compound word, and we need to think about meaning before you do that, but when just the logistics of doing that, I don't make any changes to those words. So that's how you could have a Y in the middle or things like that for compounds, some of the, the things we've already talked about. Um, compound word structure then is two bases, and then you can add on prefixes and suffixes. And I keep using my fist because that's how he talk, talked about it as well. So a good visual. When you spell compound words, spelling them out, and this is also really good practice of some of that um, work that we've done before, you want to pause between the elements in the words. So there's a little slight pause between the two elements. 
Um, and the trick with some of these, when you combine them, it's a good formative assessment for how kids are looking at doubles as well. Because we would only call something a double letter if they were in the same part of the word, I was going to say the element, if they were in the same part of the word and it had been doubled for a reason. So the example here, let me do this one first, lamp post, to spell it out it would be L-A-M-P-P-O-S-T. Bookkeeping, on the other hand, gets a little bit complex. So it's B-O-O-K-K-E-E-P-I-N-G. And that would be a lot of fun for kids to practice. But it's all about how we build them and hook them together. This spelling out is so important for kids to have a grasp of and practice in orally doing, because you can, just now, I can see the word as I'm saying it. It really, really will help with spelling. So what a compound word means. This is, um, we've done sort of the structure of putting compound words together, but really this is one of the most important things about the, the theme itself. Um, two separate words which each make sense and have a meaning of their own are joined together to produce a new word which is related in meaning to its components. And while that might seem like, the of course, there are some words that we have taken that you, we may misconstrue as being compound words, but if you do the background work to find out what they would mean if they were put together, it doesn't fit. So I think he's given two really good examples here. The first one, leapfrog, I would never have thought of. But when you think about the meaning, what does the word leap and what did the word frog mean? To jump, and then I know what a frog is, so I'm getting that visual, to jump like a frog or to leap over something. And when I put them together though, it can only define that particular game that you see in your head when kids are squatting like frogs and <laughs> leaping over each other. So the other idea that's important with compound words is often the meaning is restricted and quite specialized. We devise a compound word to really get down to something that is clearer to us by using that word than, than two separate words. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And the same with homework, yeah. It's not just any old work. It's work that you take home to do. So, um, There's some fun that you can have with compound words. First of all, letting kids see if they can find some words that might be considered compounds, but of course would be foolish, nonsense words. My favorite that Pete also talked about in his was the word carpeted that is not a compound word. It describes something completely different. It is not a car pet, but something that we walk on. And right away, especially with the younger kids, if you can break it into bases, that doesn't mean it's a, com it's a compound. It all comes back to meaning. Sort of like when they locate what they think are suffixes, but they're really part of a base. Right. Just because it's ION doesn't mean it's a suffix. <laughs> it has to have been attached. So there's a, um, some of these in the theme that you can find false compound words. Um, or and do some of those testing out on that. The other thing is to locate compound words where the pronunciation shifts. Where saying the bases separately, I would say cup, board, cup and board, but when I put it together, I call it a cupboard. And think about that from a spelling standpoint. If we have kids that are only relying on pronunciation or aren't thinking able to do this work with, with compounds, then that pronunciation shift would throw them then in their spelling. So this would be kind of a fun one to highlight as well. Um, and then unearthing the etymologies of compound words. This was interesting because coming back to meaning again, Melvin provided many examples with berries, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, and some of the um, reasoning behind it, which you could probably find by using a good dictionary. For example, with Logan Berry, the man who grew the berry first, his name was Mr. Logan. So that's how it goes back. I included the word choke cherry, which is a, a berry that we have in my part of America. And I've always thought it was such a funny name, but, and I don't like the fruit, and it makes good sense because there are very, very sour little fruits that are about the size of something you could choke on as well. They do tend to look like cherries. So some of this makes really good sense. Um, he has others that you could look at and try to um, identify their origins. Checkmate was one that I thought was very fun, like why would we put that together? But the origin is of um, Old English, Prussian, Persian, and Arabic, and it means the king is helpless. And in all those languages, there was a word that, that defined that, and that is exactly what happens in the game. So I think for the older kids, this might be a lot of fun, and because they're going to think they know everything about compound words anyway.
The other thing that he provides is some information using everyday compound words, and these are things that um, I, can, I took it sort of both ways, like words we use a lot in the everyday sense setting, but he also has uses the word every or ever in these compounds. So you, helping kids understand which way, because when do you use them broken apart and when do you use them together, it all comes back to meaning. The sentence examples he gave were for the word everyday, he likes his everyday life, or he goes to town every day. And singling those out and helping kids understand the difference all comes back to meaning as to which one we would use. Lots of practice with spelling out and using in sentences. Um, another is one that he mentioned that some people get confused about. They try to break off the A as being A plus another, but it's probably more like an other, which makes more sense meaning-wise. Um, and no one sometimes is written with a hyphen, so it's not confused with the word noon, but Melvin says that he doesn't see why that would be confusing and he tends not to write it with a hyphen but in some publications you'll see it. Um, then he goes into deeper vocabulary work. Again, I think this is more for the upper grades, but taking them further, you can construct what are called compound word webs. We are gonna do early word webs at the end. Our very last theme we're gonna explore this year is early word webs. But this is a compound word web where you take a word like body line, which is put together, and you develop words off, offshoot, compound offshoots from those words. It's easier if you just look at this on the server than for me to read them all. He's given us lots of example words. These all come from school that make a lot of sense uh, with book and work and home and class, boy and girl, lots of compound. And this is another fun thing, compound word chains for the upper school, upper grades as well to start with a compound like head and lamp and then the, the second element becomes the first element of the next compound and see how far you can go. He's given more examples of compound words. Um, he feel, this is a great way to build up dictionary skills by looking for, if I had headlamp, that I could look in the dictionary under lamp and find a compound word that used lamp as the first element. One of the things I was thinking when I wrote this down was, um, although we want to build dictionary skills, I think the expectation of using the online dictionaries or computer dictionaries is just fine. It's kind of like the Dewey Decimal System which, you know, my father, the librarian, 30 years ago thought I needed to know, but now we just don't even need to know it. So I think this can still happen in online dictionary. And um, the hyphenated compound words, sometimes they are hyphenated. There are some rules here that can help with that. Most aren't, though. Most compound words are solid words. So if your first inclination is, should it have a hyphen or not, I think the recommendation is no. Go with the solid word. Then the second thing, if you're really not sure, is to use a good dictionary. Some rule of thumb or pointers are that three or more word compounds are usually hyphenated, like the words brother-in-law, that would be hyphenated. And adjectives that are compounds are written with a hyphen if they come before the noun they're describing. So an example there would be a half-price car versus the car is half-price. So when it comes before the noun, it would get a hyphen. And um, when you suffix with hyphens, it's really just straightforward. If it's a vowel suffix you're adding on to a, I'm sorry, if you suffix with compounds, if you add a vowel suffix to a compound that ends in e or y, something may happen. So those, it doesn't really change, it doesn't get a different effect because it is a compound, it's similar to the, the suffixing work we've already done. I think that's it. So there's a lot in here considering it's compound words and it was kind of like, eh, I know everything there is to know about compounds which I don't, so, are there any questions? No. <laughs>